Welcome. I'm Elaine Starling, the host of Why 5% Succeed. This is the show where you discover how 5% of businesses really have it all. They've got great clients, fulfilling work, record compensation, and you can have all those things too. You know, I love to find fabulous people who just have it going on. Have you ever met somebody and there's that immediate heart connection? Well, today's guest is one of those ladies. She's pretty amazing. She's a speaker, writer, producer. You probably know her, Jenna Edwards. If you've seen <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you've seen Jenna. Okay? Jenna has a really interesting story, and she had a lot of challenges. Right after hitting that high with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, her life took a pretty abrupt turn, and she had to figure out how to regroup and how to work through the challenges that she was suddenly facing. Nobody could have expected these things to come out of the blue. Well, I'm so delighted to have Jenna joining us today because through your experience, we get to learn how we can change and grow and become. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jenna. Ah, thanks for having me, and I like that I got it going on. <laughs> yeah, you do. Are you kidding? That's one of the things I love about you. You're so, you have such a great sense of humor. You know, <laughs> you, truly, considering well, you all that you've you. been through, it's pretty amazing. So, Jenna, could you tell us a little bit about what happened to you? Because you were at a real high, and then life took a rather abrupt turn. Yes, What it happened? <laughs> so, just to clarify, my role on Buffy was seven seconds of screen time. That I don't think I could belittle the role because I've had people come up to me and say that that moment completely changed their life. So I'm very proud of my seven seconds, but people probably won't recognize me unless they're like uber Buffy fans. But I was in the last episode of, of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and it was one of my favorite shows ever. So for me, it was like this complete fan moment where I was on set, and I'm like, what am I doing here? And... I thought my whole life was going to change. I moved to Los Angeles to be an actor, and I was finally doing it and had it had it going on, <laughs> to use your words, if you will. And I had we had just done the the premiere party at my house, and it was just it was just this moment in time where everything seemed perfect. And it wasn't long after that I was buying oranges in the Santa Monica Farmers Market, and an old man drove through the market and killed 10 people and injured over 60 of us. So a table flew and hit me at 60 miles an hour and pinned me to the ground and, and I saw three people die that day. And I suffered severe post-traumatic stress disorder which made it so I couldn't speak. And I, because I, I stuttered when I talked and my brain basically broke. I forgot basic words. I was crying all the time. I didn't sleep for eight months. I ended up in the psych ward so they could regulate my chemicals. And I literally thought my, my career for sure was over because I couldn't read and I couldn't speak. And so at that point, because I was on this high and I thought, oh, my career's over, to me, my life was over. Like, it was just, there was, I was devastated. And through a lot of self-work and a lot of therapy and real intention to get better, I, I did. And I feel better than I did before the crash, and I'm... I'm on this mission to make the word crazy less taboo, to make it so that people really are true to themselves every day and they do the things that they love and they have the things that they love surrounding them, including the people that they love surrounding them. So it's all about creating this life that you want to live. And that wouldn't have happened to me, I don't think, unless the crash had happened. So at this point, um, almost 12 years later, I'm very grateful for the crash. I'm not grateful for all of the lives lost and, you know, the devastation and all of that, but the lessons learned were huge for me, huge. And for me, it's really interesting. I'm writing a book right now called The Evolution of a Creative Slayer because I finally feel what it means to, because I inherited Buffy's powers. So technically, ah. I'm a slayer. <laughs> and for me, that kind of, because it was so close in time to the crash, I always thought, well, what would it be like to be as powerful as, as Buffy and to be a slayer? And, and I finally understand what it means to be empowered. And I think what, you know, I'm putting words in Joss's mouth here, but I feel like what 
the purpose of the show was was to empower people and I finally get what that means and so pretty cool. That, that's so <laughs> that's awesome. I, I actually want to steal you just for a second because I love your background story. What a horrific thing to go through. But I gotta say, seeing you now where you are today, if that's what it took for you to get here, I'm so sorry you had to endure that. But wow, you are accomplishing so much and we're gonna be talking about some of the things that you're up to. But there was a quote that I saw on your website that I thought just totally rocked. And I want you to speak to this. Okay. Because I think one of the things that professional women struggle with is how to use their voice effectively. But what are the quotes that you have on your site? You say, I am a very opinionated and passionate person, and I will no longer apologize for that. I mean, I nearly died. I even experienced losing my mind. What's the worst that can happen if I share my opinion? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I love that you pulled that from the website. Um, I believe I wrote that in a moment of, of just... I was just pissed, excuse my language, but I was so over being told what I should think, what I should do, how I should behave. You know, we're we're taught that way from such a young age as women, and I feel like I need to mute it. Can you hear that? Not very much, no. Great. Okay, good. It's super loud in my my house right now. So I feel like as women, we're, we're told how to be, and for me, I really was... living in constant fear and fear of people judging me, fear of people misunderstanding me, fear of people leaving because they didn't agree with me, you know, that kind of thing. And so finally one day I literally had my near-death experience 11 years later is what I was calling it. I just, I woke up one day and I was like, no, no more. I won't be silent about the things that I care about. I won't be which is really funny for my friends because they're like, this is you silent? Like, I don't <laughs> And I'm like, yes, because every time I have an opinion about something controversial, I feel really awful saying it, or I did. I should say I felt really awful saying it. And at that moment, I was like, I almost died. I literally almost died, and I literally lost my brain. Like, I lost my mind. What's the worst that can happen? I'm going to go forward and do the things that are really important to me because that's why I'm here. Why else are we here? We're not here to follow the leader. We're not here to, you know, have someone else give us our opinions. We're here to really find who we are and who we are is special. And so what a shame not to share that with the world. I actually have a story about that. Um which was probably one of the most empowering moments of my life once I understood it. But so I went through this experience where I was producing a film and I was I was not ready to do it. And I cried myself to sleep every single night and I I was surrounded by a couple of people who were just all about them and taking credit for everything. And so for me it was all about giving credit because I didn't want to end up being the person who took things. And I met this man, he's a, he's my friend's dad, so my friend was telling him all about the experience as it was going on, and when I finally got to meet him, he, he sat down and he's like, what a great project that you just completed, and I said, oh, thanks, yeah, everybody did a great job, and he's like, no, you did a great job, and I was like, well, and he goes, how selfish of you. And for me, selfish was like that trigger word. I literally burst into tears like, I don't want to be selfish. And he said, when we don't take, when we don't accept credit for the work that we've done, we're not allowing the people around us to accept credit for the work they've done. So as the leader of this project, you have to be able to own your opinion and accept the credit and accept the part in it that you had and so I feel like in business in general if we really want our companies to go the next level we really have to take credit and own and accept all the things that we're putting out in the world because we are and we've earned the right to accept it you know and it's there's a difference for me between taking and accepting now I'm not gonna take credit from you because Mm -hmm. That's me stealing it. Like, that's not cool. 
but accepting credit when someone gives it is absolutely necessary for things to go to the next level. That's so true. You know, it's important to be willing to receive the acknowledgement of your participation, your contribution, and mm -hmm. at the same time, you can still acknowledge everybody around you as absolutely. being a valuable part of the team. It doesn't negate anybody else that people recognize your skills as a leader to bring them to their best and highest place because you're actually empowering those around you to be far more effective than they would have been without you. So yeah, it's great that you're able to own that. Now, yeah. one of the things I want to ask you about, you've got a really interesting concept and I'd love to have you explain what you mean by the term practical positivity. What oh. is that and how do we get more of that? <laughs> this is my favorite thing to talk about, or one of them. I have a lot. I'm very passionate about them. But this is definitely at the top three. When did it become that practical meant negative? Yes. Right? Like, whenever you're talking to people and, and you're like, you're just being so pessimistic, and they're like, I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realist. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, but then if you're positive, you're not real? That doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? So the spectrum mm -hmm. is like like delusional on one end and delusional on the other end. But for some reason we go, if it's negative delusion, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's much more acceptable than positive delusion. When the reality is right in the center and it can be skewed either way, you know? it's It truly is that whole the glass is half empty or it's half full. The reality is it's half. So which way do you look at it? Either way is exactly right because it's half. So I personally decide to look at things as positively practical and positively um, in the middle. So that's where that comes from. I just feel like it's really sad that in order for us to be an adult or a realist or intelligent almost, you have to be kind of bitter. <laughs> and negative and you know that like look at people who might be happy like I'm a pretty intelligent person but if you met me at a party until you start talking to me you're probably gonna think I'm like really you know not intelligent just because I'm happy <laughs> that's okay. no, I'm sorry I'm gonna stop you right there that is so funny but it's a challenge that but it's so true. many women have. It's true. When you show up as your real authentic self and you are having the time of your life, you are living full out, you are fulfilled, you are just embodying everything you would ever want to accomplish in your life. How do you show up, right? You might be a little over the top. You're excited. You're passionate about what you're talking about. You're in the zone, right? And other people look at you and if they're not in that space, you might almost be repulsive to them. Totally. But you have to be willing to show up in that space and be there because people pick up on your emotions. They actually adopt your emotions. Absolutely. And there have been some great examples. And I, of course, with your background, when somebody starts laughing, everybody starts going, what are they laughing about? You know, what's the <laughs> joke? i got to be a part of this. What's, what's going on here? And right. I love one of the things that you talk about, Jenna, and I really would love to have you expand on this, you talk about how important it is to infuse your personality into your brand. Absolutely. Could you talk a bit about that? Because there's always this feeling of, oh, no, I've got to be really serious. And I have, you know, if I'm not serious, people are going to think I'm not a good business person. <laughs> not true. Right. Well, and you have to also be really careful with people like that, going back to your party analogy, is just like showing up in the boardroom, right? Where do you want to be surrounded by the people who who are all off in the corner with their serious glasses on reading a book when you're at a party or or surrounded by people who can't take a joke in the boardroom I don't but that's me I know how I operate if, if you do want to be surrounded by people like that fantastic the point is knowing what you want to have in your life because if you don't know stuff's going to show up that you don't want and you're going to end up with it and you're not going to know what to do with it. It's true. And so in business, it's it, it's interesting. I um I know we talked about this earlier, but for me personally when I was starting my my personal brand, the whole um 
media was coming down like super hard on Paula Dean and her butter and diabetes, like that whole mm -hmm. buckle that happened. And I was sitting with my my really good friend and brand consultant, his name is Dominic Rausch, he's just amazing, and he and I were talking about it, and he knows me better than most people in life, so it was the perfect fit for him to help me really come up with what I wanted to put out into the world and make it really true to who I am, and I remember so vividly sitting on my couch going, oh my gosh, they're freaking out at Paula Deen right now and I'm only human and what if I do something wrong and what if I make a mistake and I don't want to put myself out there like that and we stopped and we went, you know, for good or bad, the internet has made it so you almost can't be inauthentic. But when Paula Deen started, she started in the world of the brand is created mm -hmm. and then they find someone who kind of can, can be within that brand. But it's not, it's not them as the brand. So it's not authentic to them. So of course they're going to make mistakes because they're not speaking their truth at the creation. So when you are starting your own business, you really have to sit down and you have to think, okay, what is it about me that I want to exemplify in the marketplace? Not, I want people to think I'm this way because then you're going to get in trouble when you're not that way. Mm -hmm. But if you just exemplify things that you already do, then there's you can't make a mistake. I mean you can make a mistake as a human, but you can't you can't do something that's against your brand because then that's, that's so doing true. something that's against you. That's that makes so sense. true. And you know one of the points that you're making here is that your brand really reflects your standards. Yes. It really does. And one of the things that I talk about that's incredibly valuable to you as a, a person who owns a company, as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. is that brand. It's the reputation that your company has in the marketplace. But people misunderstand reputation and standards. You mm. control your standards. Yes. You set the standards on how you behave in public, how quickly you respond to your clients' questions, You know the quality of the products that you provide. You control your standards. Your clients and the people who know you control your reputation mm. because your reputation is actually what they're saying publicly about you. That's right. what's so powerful about social media and all of the things that are going on there. That authenticity is built in. You can't yeah. not be authentic because everybody else is telling the world who you really are. <laughs> right. It's true. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And for me, I I love it. I feel like that's where the whole, I'm going to give my opinion and if you don't like it, then that's fine. What's the worst can happen thing came from because if you're not confident in who you are and what your opinion is, then you're not a confident brand. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to get found out. You know, you're just going to get found out. It takes 30 seconds to Google someone and find out everything right <laughs> things pop up and uh -huh. so gone are the days when you can kind of have a persona if you like you have to just be you that's right and i think it's great because people should just be themselves i think people are beautiful that's why this world is so fun and interesting if we were all the same it would be so boring and Yes, I don't. I probably don't agree with ninety percent of my family and friends on certain topics, but we all respect each other because we have opinions and because we're integral with those opinions. Um, and that's, I think, the key. Like, be who you are, and then be of integrity it, with it, and hold that place for it, and then shine, shine from there. You know. So Jenna, I have to ask you because you're so right and I love everything that you're saying and I would love to hear a practical tip or something that you have done because you were, you said in bed, in tears, you couldn't leave the house and now look at you. I mean, oh my gosh, not even yeah, day, right? The house. So I'm sure you still have your moments, but what do you say to yourself? What is an exercise that we could do when we're feeling the fear? And we oh, need to gosh. be able to move beyond it. Is there some simple tip that you could share with us? There's many. There's many simple tips. Um, the thing is, I think the biggest thing for me is intention. 
Like, you have to really decide that you want to get better in anything. And then be intentional with whatever you're doing. And for me, the word intention also comes with the idea of slowing down. Because we in business, right, we're going all over the place. Like, oh, I've got to do this. Oh, that phone call. Oh, this is happening. Oh, that's happening. This week in particular, I am like that. And I can feel it in my body that I haven't had time to just go, okay, I need 10 minutes to just stop and figure out what I am doing (laughs) for the rest of the week. And, And to just be calm in your body. I mean, some people call it meditation. Some people call it awareness or consciousness or prayer. Whatever it is for you, it's crucial, in my opinion, to just slow down. Because for me, when when you have PTSD, I call PTSD the ultimate in overwhelm. Like everything about you is completely overwhelmed, down to your nerves. Like when, when people touched me, I would cry because it hurt. It physically hurts because your body's like this all the time because it thinks something's going to happen to you, right? It's a total chemical imbalance. And so I had to get really good at breathing and just being. And then another tip that I just recently learned, which I attribute to like taking my self-development to the next level, is while you're breathing, whatever emotion comes up, let it happen. Like, when we fight our emotions, it makes them stronger. So we're walking through the whole day being sad when we could have just cried our eyes out for 10 minutes and then been happy because the body needed the release, right? And it's not even a mental thing. It's totally a physical thing. Like, if you feel tears, that's a physical reaction to something going on that your body's saying, I just need to get this out. So looking at like our emotions and the way we handle ourselves a little more practically has helped me really be able to move forward without all of the stress I used to feel that made me cry myself to sleep and have panic attacks and flashbacks and all of that. So those two things are are important. And I think also in addition to those, like back to the 10 minutes of silence, Mm -hmm. I know some people can't be still and silent. I happen to be kind of one of them, like I'm working on it, but I find like people who need to bounce a ball against the wall or just write without thinking or do dishes or fold laundry or go garden, like take 10 minutes to just shut your brain off and check in with what your body's telling you and like get that kind of nervous energy out all at the same time and you're going to have like so much more productivity. I love that. I really love that. Now, could you talk a little bit about integrating fun and function? Yeah, I know that you have a really exciting new project that you're working on, and it just sounds like it totally ties in with that concept. So maybe yes. you can explain what you're up to now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have always said I hate it when you become an adult and everything gets beige. Like... What is that? Why is it that in order to be taken seriously, especially as women, we have to wear like a beige top with black pants and carry a beige purse and live in a beige house? And it's just, it, it's this idea that that's the only way we're going to be taken seriously. You know, back to the party thing where people are going to think I'm silly because I'm happy instead of intelligent. Like we think that we have to put on this persona. And again, personas don't work anymore. They just don't. People will find you out. People are becoming much more aware. And so for me, I am way more functional if I have a really fun notebook to write in or a really cute bag to carry around. Or like I have a pen that is an orange stem with yellow flower things made out of recycled trash bags. And I carry it with me everywhere. I bring it to set. People are like, what is that? My clipboard has flowers on it and it's bright red. Like for me, it makes it, that's just me though. That's my personality. So I'm not saying everybody needs to go out and get a red clipboard with flowers on it. I'm just saying find what makes you happy within your workspace and surround yourself with that. If you work in a cubicle, you, for me, I would need to decorate the bajiggities out of that cubicle or I would be unproductive because I would be sad, my energy would be low, 
you know. So the idea of fun and function is make whatever your whatever functional product you have. My laptop cover is bright yellow, <laughs> and when I look at it, I'm like, oh, it's bright yellow. Yay! It makes me happy. Whatever you need to surround yourself with within your functional space that makes you happy is going to make you more productive. I, I really love what you're saying because I hear you are taking feng shui to a whole new level. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> I don't know anything yeah, but, about feng shui. Yeah, but feng shui is about organizing your space. It's about yeah. allowing the energy to flow, and every single person has a different kind of energy. Absolutely. And, and is attracted to different things. I love antiques, so... I'm surrounded by antiques. That's amazing. Not, not the right thing for everybody, but right. know what really resonates for you. Know what sensory stimulation puts you in the zone because exactly. all of your senses come to bear in your present experience and in your ability to be truly present for the people Absolutely. that you're working with. So well, yeah, I, I love that. Now, tell us about your TV show. I want okay. to hear about that. I'm going to, but really quick, I really want to put it out there to the audience. Isn't that why we started our own businesses in the first place? Yeah. To be able to do the things that we love to do. So find out who you are and really be true with yourself and then put that around you. And that's basically what my TV show, I'm, I'm working on this show right now called Create Your Space. And it's all about mixing, my whole brand is about mixing crafting with self-empowerment. And so and creating the life that you love and the life that you want and the first show is about going into people's spaces that maybe don't do they don't have anything that reflects who they are within that space and just finding out what it is that they're about and then creating craft projects and DIY projects within that space that reflect who they are so that when they go into that space they feel a, a sense of accomplishment because they did the project themselves. Mm -hmm. And B, a sense of, of reflection of, yeah, that's what I'm about. Because we forget. We, again, we're like, everything's going on all at once. And we forget why we're doing things. Why are we starting our own business, working 18 hours a day, trying to find clients, right? What is the why? And if you can have something in your space that you did, that you created that reflects that why, I think that your life is just going to reflect that so much more. That so that's great. what the show's about. It's going to be that fun. That's such a great concept. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to watch Thanks. the show. So make sure you tell me when it's available. I yeah, will. There's a good friend of mine, and she and her husband have a really interesting concept. They took two sides of a doorway, and on one side is their dream board. And they've got all these pictures of the things they'd like to do, what they'd like to experience, what they want to accomplish in their life, blah, blah, blah. On the other side of the door is the accomplished dream. They take what oh, was yeah. just a dream and they put it over and thought, yeah, we did that. How cool That's is that? amazing. Yeah, isn't it a great I idea? I love that. Steal it. That's an incredible idea. She would love to have you use that. I'm totally Absolutely. stealing it. Do they want to be on the show? We can totally do that on the show. <laughs> that's really fun. Oh, so, that's so fun. But see, that's like being creative and being clever, and it's not difficult. I mean, it takes newspaper articles and scotch tape and a door. But people get caught up in the idea of crafting. Oh, I'm not creative. Oh, I'm not a crafter. You know, and so I part of why I want to do the show is to show people that anybody can create the things that they want to create. It just takes that leap of faith and you have to let go of the judgment. You know, I have a friend who always, I started as a scrapbooker um, mainly in my crafting world and I have a friend who always says there's no mistakes in scrapbooking. And so I carry it over. There's no mistakes in creativity. Like you're just being creative but we all judge ourselves based on the, on you know, the Martha Stewart's of the world who, like, present this amazingly beautiful, perfect, and I'm not begging on Martha Stewart, like, bless her for bringing crafting to the forefront. I love it. But I can't make things look as good as Martha Stewart. And so a lot of times, like, I'm okay with that, but there are a lot of people who are not okay with that, and they look at it as a failure. And so it, for me, the show is so much more about 
highlighting the good parts of trying, mm. of, you know, taking that leap, doing that thing. And one of my favorite things ever in the world is the Pinterest fails. Have you uh -huh. seen them? I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> where they take a picture of somebody that somebody posted, like a cake that they made on Pinterest, and then they try it at home, and it doesn't look anywhere <laughs> or anything like it, and it's like, Pinterest fail. <laughs> but it's great. It's like, yes, because that's real life. <laughs> this it cake that, that looks really perfect took 10 people, I promise you, and it's probably made of styrofoam with frosting on the top, and this <laughs> cake is like real life, you know, so... <laughs> That is so great. I love that example. And I have one to share with you, a similar yeah. story. My husband and I were taking home winemaking classes because we have a cool. small vineyard. And we really are not good at making wine. And we were at the class, and somebody raised their hand and said, well, um, you know, there's all this stuff about having to sterilize everything. We're really worried we're going to poison somebody with our wine. And they said, no, no, no. You don't have to worry about that. Wine is used to purify water in countries where they have really bad water. You are never going to kill somebody with your wine. It's just a matter of how it tastes. So if you like your wine and you can drink your wine, if somebody ever asks you, why did you make it that way? You say, it was a stylistic reference. Because <laughs> I like it like that, honey. That's, That's right. why I say like that. So anytime somebody disses on you for something that you're doing, you just say, hey, it's a stylistic preference. That's I right. like having a little bit of imperfection. In fact, when you look at a Persian rug, there is a deliberate mistake. Uh -huh. A deliberate mistake because only God can be perfect. The rest of us get to celebrate our humanity. Oh, I love that. When I always look at it like, you know, I like gymnastics and I love watching gymnastics. Me Even too. if they fall off the balance beam like 20 times, when they are done, man, their hands are in the air, their head is held high, and they're like, that's right, that's what I did. And they own it, you know? And so they may be just dying inside, but they still have to own it at the end of the performance. And I feel like that's how we should look at life, is like, yeah, you know what? I messed up really good. <laughs> Go me. I'm good at messing up in this particular area of life. <laughs> You're human. You're That's learning. Right. It's fun, you know. So, Jenna, I know one of the things that you're very passionate about is teaching people about the combination of fear and empowerment and yes. how fear can actually be incredibly empowering you. Could you talk just a little bit about fear and empowerment? Yes. <laughs> I am passionate about it because from for me being in the ultimate fear, being in the ultimate overwhelm and learning how to overcome those fears and like we were just talking about almost celebrate the imperfection has given me this insane sense of empowerment. And so I feel like if you take something, like think of it this way. You take something that you're terrified of. Oh, I'm going to climb that mountain even though I'm scared of heights. And you, every single day, intentionally and deliberately take one step and move forward. And you eventually reach that mountain. It's so much more empowering than if you just started, you know, two feet from the top and you weren't afraid at all and you just did it. Then you're not going to have that sense of empowerment. You're just going to have the... The idea that, oh, yeah, I climbed the top of a mountain, woo, big deal. Mm -hmm. But when you have a fear and you overcome it and you continue to do that in your life, you will constantly be empowered to do the next challenge. And when we're in business, that's what we have to do. I mean, I would do a survey if I were you and say, who here isn't afraid? <laughs> I don't think you would get one single person saying, oh, I'm not afraid of anything. You know, like starting your own business and putting yourself out there is terrifying. You know, everybody's looking at you or you think everybody's looking at you, but really it's more <laughs> in our heads. But, you know, people are looking at you and, and there's the fear of judgment and there's the fear of failure and there's the fear of success. What happens when I get so busy I can't handle it? You know, so there's always this fear but the coolest part about being an entrepreneur is overcoming that fear and really succeeding. And 
I applaud anyone who's listening or watching right now because it shows that you want to better yourself. And I feel like that is the key to empowerment is the desire to be better in the next moment. Absolutely. Words so well spoken. I just I love your passion and your enthusiasm, Jenna. And I want to encourage everybody watching the show to go to Jenna Edwards media.com. We'll make sure that that's in the comments so it's easy for you to find her website. But go to JennaEdwardsMedia.com and sign up for her newsletter. I sure have because I want to know what this amazing lady is up to. I want to know what her show is. I'm going to be watching that show. And trust me, I'm very interested in supporting you. Thank you so much for being a part of this um, amazing experience today. This is just fabulous. It's been an honor. I love what you're doing and I love all of everyone listening, you know, keep doing it. Be yourself. Go out there and get them. Just go get them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no words. <laughs> no words to improve on that. No more words. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Jenna. Everybody, I so appreciate you joining us today. I look forward to seeing you next week, same time. Bye-bye. <laughs>